We're going to talk about antiques tonight. Uh, uh, I don't mean the person sitting next to you, but those other <laughs> art <laughs> artifacts that uh, uh, we all have as a part of our past. We've seen them that uh, have value, sometimes more intrinsic and more sentimental value than dollar value, but they also have dollar value. And we're going to show you with a lady who's uh, an expert on antiques and how to find them. Uh, we're going to talk about them and show you some. And with me is Ann Gilbert, who you've written two books, and you have another book coming out Third next book comes out soon. as of this week. Right. And the next book I'm working on will be about investing. And you have a antiques. newspaper syndicated column. A syndicated column. Everywhere column, but Florida. Everywhere but Florida. <laughs> That's a big hint. Okay. We have so much to show you. We want to get right to showing you uh, some antiques and some history behind these things. So, Ann, let's go. What do we have Okay. Here? Should I start out with what I... Yeah. I'm never without. Right. First place I can't see without my glasses, which I don't know where they are, but I always take this with me because if I didn't have it, I might miss something important that would tell me that this was an antique or this was a reproduction. A lot of reproductions around. I would say that 99% of the antiques that you see aren't. Really? <laughs> they aren't. Okay. And this is nothing new. It really isn't new. Now we're into reproductions of reproductions of reproductions. Hmm. And I think this is why so many young people who are a little leery of the market have gone into collecting what we call collectibles. Right. And gold and oak and wicker, things that haven't, or at that moment, hadn't been reproduced. But now you're going to hopefully show us some things, and, and besides reading your books, but some things that you can do. In other words, you don't have to be an expert not no. to get ripped off. I figure if I can do it, anybody can do it. Right. After all, before I started writing the column, I had to be a collector. You have to start somewhere. Right. And I certainly have made my share of mistakes. I have a, a great big mistake that's in my dining room that I thought was an yeah. authentic Sheraton sideboard, and it turned out that it wasn't. It was a nice reproduction. So I learn. I learn from my mistakes. Well, what kinds of uh, uh, things do people need to know? Well, to first of all, it depends on what they're going to collect, what they decide they want to do. They should make some kind of a trip to the library and do a lot of research and travel to all the antique shows they can. Whenever there's a show like in Florida, you definitely should go, whoever is right. going to collect. And have in mind, for instance, if you're going to collect pewter, here I have two pewter plates. They're both the same age, or at least they are supposed to both be around 200 years old. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that you're interested in pewter. Okay. Let's assume you're interested in American pewter. Well, there are a certain number of American names and touch marks. On the back, you should be able to find a mark or a stamp. And if you don't, chances are that it may be American rather than foreign, because very few of the American pewter pieces existing that are 200 years old had marks on. Many of them didn't. Hmm. And, I see a little mark. I can hardly make it out. Well, this is sort of a fascinating story. I was a novice at pewter. I really didn't know much about it until I started writing this last book, and I realized there were so many pewter collectors, I'd better mm. find out about it. And I went to an antique shop, and I respect the woman that owns the shop very much. And she said, well, look at this with your magnifying glass. It says London on the bottom. I think it must be English. And I said, well, okay. And the price was about $45. I said, let's start with this to myself. I studied it very carefully. I went to the library, and I learned that London was put on by American pewter makers because 200 years ago it, there was no class if you bought a piece of American, made in American uh, pewter. I see. So I kept looking and I learned that some of the funny little marks around here were eagles, American eagle touch marks. But I okay. still didn't know who had done it until I took a photograph of this in black and white and by a quirk of fate two little birds showed up and I knew that I had a piece by an early and a rare pewter maker by the name of Belcher, Joseph Belcher. Hmm. How much is that worth? It, around 150, 250, it, really? it varies, it just depends. The well, touch about... marks are not clear, it would have to really right. be authenticated. And the one there, is that? This one, I was intrigued, this was only $35 and I picked it up a couple of weeks ago and it had a label of American on it and it's hammered, all these little marks. Mm -hmm. which were marks of quality. It also is 200 years old. You can tell by the lathe marks on both. This is a clue for all of you pewter collectors so that you won't get taken. Uh, if you know how a piece was made, whether it's furniture, pewter, or glass, you will have your clues to the age of a piece that can't be faked. A primitive hand lathe left marks circular 
concentric little marks going mm -hmm. round and round. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's look at this some of these. This is Swedish, just oh. thought I'd tell you. <laughs> I okay. wasn't American. Great. Now, what else do we have? Photography is one of the hottest collectibles growing. Really? I've noticed that Sotheby Park Burnett has had a, a couple of very important auctions, and the prices have gone way up. I have two trunks full of, do you? of pictures I know are 200 years old. Ten times All right. You mean Number they have value? See, it, I've been saving oh, it for yes. no reason. But for my family from five generations back. Especially the older the better because you might have somebody, some of the name really? photographers of the period like oh, Brady yeah. who did it Abraham Lincoln and every notable going you might have something <coughs> there with several hundred dollars each. This is my uncle Clarence <laughs> and this is Annapolis class of 1900 I, as I recall Great. and he's collectible. Now the reason he would be would be because it shows a uniform right? and if he had uh, a, a lady next to him in a beautiful gown, that would be equally important. Hmm. Or if he was standing next to an old car, that would make it even more valuable. Well, I've really got to go home tonight. Go home and go, go th through the whole trip. Yeah, right. Here's another example of what you can find when you're not expecting. It's a, a belt buckle, and I've turned it into a necklace, which antique jewelry is quite expensive, as you know. Mm -hmm. yes. But if you buy something as a discarded belt buckle for $35, which I did at a church rummage, Hmm. And it actually is real quartz and real malachite, real amethyst, and real Art Nouveau. Hmm. I have a piece that's worth over two hundred and fifty dollars. So it's a cheap piece of jewelry. Right. Right. <laughs> well, I guess the <clears throat> the main message is to look at everything with a different view, and not just junk. It may be an antique. I want to show you Anne's latest book, How to Be an Antiques Detective, which uh, will be out shortly. Uh, which will I hope guess, everybody help. buys it. <laughs> Well it, uh, well, it goes through just more or less what I've been saying, all right. the clues that you look for. And okay. it, I have other antique detectives who've been successful, and they've tell, told their stories also. And can they write you in Chicago at the Sun-Times if they want? They could write to me through Grosset and Dunlap, the publisher, or the Chicago Sun-Times. And Gilbert, Chicago Sun-Times, and maybe she can help you. And Anne, we thank Glad you very to. much for being with us. It's been fun. Thank you. We'll be right back.